Hello guys and welcome back. We're going to be reading today John. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to the darkness. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or pain, or excuse me, they are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one, who, him, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. John testified, or excuse me, the testimony of John the Baptist. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, Who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well, then who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we are expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah. I am a voice shouting in the wilderness. Clear the way for the Lord's coming. Then Pharisees who had been sent asked him, If you aren't Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? John told them, I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize. Through his ministry follows mine, excuse me, though his ministry follows mine, I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. This encounter took place in Bethany in an area east of Jordan River where John was baptizing. Jesus, the Lamb of God. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about when I said, A man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit des descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. The following day, John was again standing in with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother, Simon, and told him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus, looking intentionally at Simon. Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Excuse me?
The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethesda, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, and he is the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael, can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they, replaced, as they approached, Jesus said, Now, here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this because I told you? that I had seen you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. The Wedding at Cana The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana of Galilee, in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to this celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told them, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that is not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jugs used stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold twenty to thirty gallons. Jesus told the servants, Fill the jars with water. When the jars have been filled, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few, Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. I think we'll stop there for today, but that's... I really love this part of the Bible, John. I like this story. I think it's very interesting. And we left off on John 1... Um, 150, it looks like. And I am reading the Inspire Praise Bible by Tyndale. So I'm on page 1,285. And on the top it says John 150.